All right, I started the recording, so I'll share this uh, brief recording here after we're done. Once I, well, I, I, I'll get it captioned just for good measure. I know you don't need it, but, you know, just in the event there is somebody who does. All yeah. right, um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So gravitation. All right. So just like we're doing gravitation in a lecture, you have um, an experiment to do, do on gravitation. Works the same way. You go into the experiment handout. Sorry, uh, my, I, I, I'm not sure why the internet is being so temperamental here. All right, so open the simulator. Uh, you know, click the big red five. By now, you probably have seen that on a bunch of them. And the way this one works is you can adjust the mass by, you know, slide the slider or individually. Okay. You can uh, drop and drag to move them closer or further. And this uh, this uh, ruler measures the distance between them in meters. I like it to be on scientific notation because that's a much easier number to interpret. Not, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, that whole kind of having things as a, a decimal is, um, you know, a little bit, I don't know, it's not friendly. So I put it on scientific notation to get the force. So this simulator takes the force, takes the masses and the distance, and it calculates the force for you, okay? And that's pretty much what you do with this. That's it. You play around with the distance, you play around with the mass, and look at how the force changes. Notice that this force arrow shows that object M1 is being pulled toward M2, and this arrow shows that object M2 is being pulled toward M1 with the same amount of force, okay? Why? Because they both attract each other with the same amount of force, okay? The same amount of gravitational or gravity force, all right? So, you're gonna use that simulator to help you complete the experiment handout, all right? It gives you a little bit background here. Here's the gravitation formula. We just looked at that in lecture. This is the uh, Newton's second law for centripetal force. And here's the centripetal acceleration. All of the formulas that we just looked at in the um, examples that I worked for you, okay? So you have the object's mass, you have the distance, you get the force from the simulator, and then you use it to calculate big G. Now, some students were having difficulty with calculating big G, so I gave you a handout here, how to calculate big G. Okay, so um, so this is an example of how you calculate big G. So I'm using a force of 20 newtons. Imagine that this value would have come from the simulator. This is D is the distance between them. D or R. Sometimes you see it written with the R, which is typically how I write it. But a, a lot of books use D for distance. The mass of the two objects is uh, also coming from the simulator. So all of these values come from the simulator, and then you plug them into this formula. What I did was I rearranged the gravitational force so that you can use it to calculate big G. Now, you might ask the question, why do we want to calculate big G? because we're trying to see how close we can approximate big G 
using the simulator. Okay. So I plugged in my force. I plugged in my distance, square it. And then I plug in my two masses in the denominator and multiply them. And I use that in this formula to calculate big G. So I got a value of big G, 2.29 Newton meter square per kilogram square, square. Because the unit for big G is Newton meter square per kilogram square. Okay. Now, I showed you earlier that the value for big G is typically um, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square well if i got 2.29 that's way off from that right so that's what you're going to be doing you're going to be using the simulator to calculate big g and then you're going to see how close do you come to the published value the published value which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. okay so you take these, all of the values for big G that you calculate in the last column of the table, add them together, get an average. And then you're going to use that average value in a percent error formula. This right here, this question, how did your value of big G compare to the published value? Anytime they ask you to compare values, they mean do a percent error calculation. In this case, the published value is the correct value and your average is the experiment value, okay? So are you following that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, if you get lost, again, if you click on the link in the overview that says how to calculate big G, this folder will open. There's an example of how you calculate big G. There's also a reminder, when you do a percent error calculation, use G average and G actual, right? Or G published. That's what we call, they're calling it, the published value, okay? I also have um, um, some information that can guide you where G actual is given, the exp a formula for G experimental is given, and how you get G average is given. Okay, so if you are having any difficulty, then what you want to do is click on that how to calculate big G and you have access to this folder. All right, so for this one, uh, in terms of a lab report, uh, your standard format where you have an abstract, your data and analysis is the completed experiment handout, and then you write a conclusion, explain what you learned uh, from, you know, by completing this whole experiment, um, uh, you know, the whole experiment process, all right? Remember, since it's just you and me again today, you should pick one of these questions, I don't care which one, and post your answer in a discussion for today and then the other two questions or the remaining questions you can answer by Saturday. Does that make sense to you? Yes, ma'am. All right. So um, also, just like I talked about the project in the lecture class, remember, since you're in lecture and lab, there are two different articles that have to be approved. I'm not sure if you got any articles approved at this point, but if you're going to send me articles to approve this weekend, you have to be getting a, an article approved for lecture and an article approved for lab because you have two summaries that you have to write, one for lecture and one for lab, okay? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. I don't believe so. All right. So look, if you're working at any point this weekend, Tyler, don't hesitate to email me. You, if you if you need to get articles approved, you're going to be emailing me anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to be checking emails. I'll be keep, you know, if it's no more than to have my phone handy, if I'm moving around to check emails periodically to respond. Just understand that when 1159 p.m. comes on Saturday, 
I am not going to approve any more articles for any classes. That period right. is over with. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And again, I will share this recording so that if you need to go back and refresh yourself on anything in terms of how to complete the experiment, um, it'll be available. All righty. Sounds good. All right. You have a good one. All right. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye now. Bye. So just for the record, it is uh, 11 minutes after 7. Tyler and I have reviewed the material for today's experiment, lab report, and discussion. Um, I'm going to leave the recording uh, open in the event that other students join in. I, I will stop the recording at exactly 7.30, and uh, that recording will be available in the announcements.